Hey, it's Thomas here, and today we're talking about something really important, especially for somebody who's not yet in the aquarium hobby. I know a bunch of you guys are, and you know what you're doing. But for those of you who are watching this video because you have no idea where to start with purchasing your first aquarium, my goal today is to give you the knowledge required so that you can make that decision easily. So there are three things you really want to consider when you're buying your first tank. Number one, you want to consider your budget. Number two, how much space you actually have in your home for an aquarium. And number three, what kind of fish you want to keep because that changes a lot. So let's go over those things right now. So let's start with the most fun of the three. What fish do you want to keep? Now, depending on the fish you keep or the fish you're interested in keeping, your aquarium requirements are gonna change because different species of fish are gonna require different amounts of space as adults. Uh, some of them will require more swimming space, some won't care as much. But long story short, the aquarium you end up with will largely dictate what kind of fish you're gonna be able to keep. So sometimes the best way to choose a tank is to actually look at what fish you're most interested in and then get the tank tailored to those fish. So what I usually recommend is that you go to your local aquarium shop, take a walk around the fish department, have a look at all the fish that are there, and maybe even grab an employee there and ask them questions about those fish, figure out what the max sizes of those fish are, what the aquarium requirements of those fish are that most interest you, and then build the tank around them. That way, you know you're gonna end up with the fish that you most want, rather than getting a tank that might not be suitable for them and then regretting it. The second consideration is how much space do you actually have at your home for that aquarium? So if there's a spawn in your house and you're like, this is where the aquarium's going, your best bet is probably to just get the largest tank that you can fit in that space, which will afford you the most amount of options in terms of what fish you can keep. Besides the fact that if you're at the store and you see a fish that you like and it's three feet long as an adult and is going to require a 500 gallon aquarium, but you don't have that much space at home, then you're probably best off just getting the biggest tank you can fit and choosing from the widest selection possible for your situation. That brings us to our last consideration, which is budget. Obviously, as tanks get larger, the budget's gonna have to increase to support those tanks. Like a 20 gallon is a mere fraction of the price of a 200 gallon. And that's not only because of the cost of the aquarium itself, but also because the equipment and the decorations are going to scale in price as you get larger with the aquarium as well. So sometimes what's best to do is figure out what your budget is for an aquarium. How much do you want to spend on this aquarium all set up, all things considered, all said and done? So lighting, filtration, heating, everything. And then walk into your store with that budget and see what is going to fit within your budget. Maybe your budget's so large that you don't have enough space to get the tank that you can afford. So you go a little bit smaller. We can't always give up our entire house to aquariums. However, you may find that you've got more space than you have budget for aquarium. So just get what you can afford and then you can look at fish and stuff that will fit within that. And it'll be great. And you're still gonna love it because aquarium keeping isn't just about exactly what fish you're keeping, but just the enjoyment of the entire experience of keeping that aquarium. And watching the fish swim is very relaxing. With all of that considered, I generally recommend beginners start with an aquarium somewhere between 20 and 55 gallons. 20 gallons is big enough to be relatively easy and provide lots of great options for fish selection while also being very manageable to maintain and relatively inexpensive, especially if you purchase a starter kit that includes all the basic equipment like lighting and heating and a filter. A 55 gallon tank is an impressive size without being overly large or difficult to work with. It expands your fish options quite a bit over a 20 gallon and can still be found in starter kit form to keep the budget reasonable for the average new aquarium owner. Although it's more than twice the size, a 55 gallon usually isn't too much more time consuming maintenance wise than a 20 gallon. A quick note though, I'm not saying that a new aquarium owner shouldn't go less than 20 gallons or shouldn't go more than 55 gallons because it definitely happens. If you want a single male beta, a 10 gallon is gonna be more than enough. And if you want showy African cichlids, a 90 gallon is a way better starting point than a 55. See how the species of fish changes what size aquarium you actually need to have? Like we talked about earlier in the video. You remember, it was at the, the beginning. Brian, roll the clip. Different species of fish are gonna require different amounts of space as adults. Uh, some of them will require more swimming space. Some won't care as much. See? Aha! Uh -huh. Usually new aquarium owners aren't exactly sure what they want to keep fish-wise, and more so, just know they'd love to have an aquarium in their home. That's where general recommendations like this come into play. But wait! There's more! 
more you say? How could there be more? I thought you gave me everything I need to know. I should go get a take. Just, just hear me out for a second. A few tidbits you should know before you purchase a tank are number one, the footprint of the aquarium is more important than the height. An aquarium that is wider side to side and front to back than it is tall will have more usable real estate for the fish in that aquarium than an aquarium of the exact same volume that is taller than it is wide. Another super important consideration is that tanks for plants and corals that are really tall will have a harder time getting light all the way to the bottom than a shallower tank because light is actually decreased exponentially with water depth. It's also worth mentioning that an aquarium that's really tall can be a lot more cumbersome to work on. So if you don't have long arms and you're trying to reach to the bottom of a 30 inch aquarium, you might find it a little bit difficult. The time it takes to do maintenance will also increase somewhat as you increase the size of the tank. There'll be more surface area to clean and more water volume to change, which will take a bit longer than it would with a smaller aquarium. For those reasons, sometimes people prefer to stay smaller, even if their budget and space could afford a larger tank. The catch there though, is that the smaller the aquarium is, the more pronounced a mistake will be. So if you add too much food or too much of a liquid that you're putting into the aquarium, in a 10 gallon, it's gonna be much more pronounced than it would be in a 20 gallon by a factor of literally two. It's gonna be twice as harmful to a 10 than it would be to that 20 due to dilution. So sometimes it's a little bit easier to go just a touch larger than it would be to go a touch smaller. However, if you're being careful and you're doing the best you can, chances are you're not gonna have too much of a problem. Lastly, tanks are made from different materials. When you go to your local aquarium shop and you have a look around, you're gonna notice that there are lots of different types of tanks, different sizes, shapes, everything, but you might also notice that there are different materials. Notably, there are three. There's gonna be glass aquariums, probably the one you picture in your mind's eye when you think of a tank. There's also going to be plastic aquariums, just clear plastic, no big deal, and also acrylic tanks. Those are pretty cool. Now, here's the thing. Glass is the aquarium staple. Most aquariums are gonna be made from glass held together with aquarium safe silicone. It makes really nice, robust connections between the panels of glass. It's waterproof, it's gonna hold all that water in. Glass is quite strong and it's clear so you can see your fish through it. So it makes sense as a material to use. It's also relatively inexpensive, which keeps aquarium cost lower. The thing is glass is very heavy. So the larger the tank gets, the more cumbersome it's gonna to be to get in and out of your home. Uh, glass can also break or shatter if it's hit with something hard, if there's a nice hard impact made, which really you shouldn't be sticking your aquarium in a uh, place where it's most likely to get hit with something like where children play. You gotta keep these things in consideration. But ultimately it's a great choice. And most people are gonna have a glass aquarium for their first aquarium. The next option is plastic. Now, plastic tanks, unfortunately, are generally very, very small. You're gonna see plastic tanks mostly under 20 gallons, and they're gonna be all kinds of cool shapes and colors. You'll have weird bow front tanks, hexagon tanks, half moon tanks. You'll have themed tanks that look kind of like a wave. There's all kinds of different tanks themed with cartoon characters and stuff to interest your children into getting into the hobby. The problem with plastic tanks is they're very light and easy to crack, very easy to crack. They're also extremely easy to scratch. So if you're doing maintenance on a small tank like that, you have to make sure you're using soft sponges, otherwise you're gonna mar up the inside of the tank and it's gonna make it foggy. You'll have a harder time seeing into it and seeing your fish. Another issue is because they're so small, you're really limited to the amount of fish you can put in them. And you also have to be very careful with making sure you get one that is able to take on a proper filter and a proper heater so that you can give those fish the best home possible. For that reason, I don't usually recommend small plastic tanks as first time uh, aquariums for people. I usually think going to glass, something a little bit bigger is gonna be easier on you. Lastly, we've got acrylic. Acrylic's a great option for an aquarium. It's extremely strong. Acrylic is chemically welded together rather than held together with silicone or glued, which means it's essentially one big piece and has a very low chance of ever leaking. Acrylics are also extremely light, which is nice. Acrylic as a material is much less dense than glass, and therefore a big acrylic aquarium is gonna be easier to move around than a really big glass aquarium. So if you're thinking of growing large, acrylic's a great option. Acrylic tanks are also ultra clear. Acrylic as a material has very low distortion and has low impurities, which means 
the light passing through it isn't changed at all. So when your fish are swimming around in the tank and you're looking at them through that acrylic, they're gonna be as true to color as possible. Whereas glass sometimes has a bit of a hue, like a, a green or a bluish tinge, which can change the way things look. Acrylic doesn't have that issue. Acrylic tanks can also be manufactured custom in a crazy amount of shapes. In fact, you can pretty much do whatever you want with acrylic because it's so easy to heat up and bend and then glue together in weird positions. You could get all kinds of fancy shapes to wrap around fixtures in your home like staircases, uh, or maybe you just want a giant heart-shaped aquarium. Either way, acrylic is a great option for anything custom. Now there are some caveats to acrylic. Number one, acrylic is very soft and can be easy to scratch. I mean, it's a strong material, but when it comes to surface scratches, a piece of gravel getting caught between your sponge or even using a coarse abrasive sponge could easily mark up the inside of the tank and then you'd have to buff it out, which is a long arduous process that nobody really wants to go with. So it's really important to consider that when you have an acrylic aquarium, you have to take extra care to make sure that you don't mess up the inside of the tank during maintenance or the outside really. It's just as easy scratched on the outside as it is on the inside. Lastly, acrylic is quite a bit more costly than glass. So, huh, if you think about it, if you wanna get the most aquarium you can for your budget, you're probably gonna find that in a glass aquarium, not an acrylic one, which is why you don't see more acrylic aquariums around in standard sizes. Most acrylic tanks are gonna be big custom jobs uh, where the sky was the limit in terms of budget, but that's not most of us. So. I'm, all I'm saying is I don't have acrylic tanks. I don't. I'm a glass guy. I got all kinds of glass. Low iron glass, that's pretty clear. Acrylic. So ultimately, first time aquarium owners are probably gonna buy a glass aquarium somewhere in the ballpark of 20 to 55 gallons. It's also most likely gonna be a starter kit because it keeps the budget nice and low and is simple, but also effective. Now, the size of the tank you get is gonna depend on how much space you have, your budget, and what kind of fish you wanna keep. So for all you soon-to-be aquarium owners out there, I hope you found this video helpful for you. If you have any questions at all, though, drop those down in the comment section. I'd love to get back to you. And for you seasoned aquarium owners out there, let us know what you, know, what you think on this subject. Maybe as a first-time aquarium owner, you wish you did something differently. Let us know what that is because that kind of information is helpful to everybody. And feel free to reach out to us on uh, Facebook because we have that. And you can subscribe to our channel too. We've got tons of useful information for new aquarium owners already on the channel. And we've got lots of cool stuff coming that you'd love to see like aquarium builds. So follow along with us. And as always, keep on tanking. You get your first tank and you start tanking and then we can keep on tanking together as a family, a big old family of tankers who tank on in the future with the aquariums and help each other as a community because that's what this is about. Tanking on together, keep on tanking community. I'm gonna make it happen. Oh, you're still here. They're trying to figure out how they get their first tank. What do we do? I don't even know. And those things are gonna be what fish you're interested in keeping, your budget, and also the third thing in which I forgot again. As light is actually decreased, actually, by the actual actualness of the actually.